we previously talked over two years ago. Do you think there's still neurons in your brain that uh, remember that conversation, that uh, remember me and got excited? Like there's a Lex neuron in your brain that just like finally has a purpose? I do remember our conversation. I have some memories of it. And I formed additional memories of you in the meantime. Um, I wouldn't say there's a neuron or a neurons in my brain that know you, but there are synapses in my brain that have formed that reflect my knowledge of you and the model I have of you in the world. And whether the exact same synapses were formed two years ago, it's hard to say because these things come and go all the time. But um, we know from one thing to know about brains is that when you think of things, you often erase the memory and rewrite it again. So yes, but I have a memory of you and I have and that's instantiated in synapses. There's a simpler way to think about it. Like, so you have, we have a, a model of the world in your head and that model is continually being updated. I updated this morning. You offered me this water. You said it was from the refrigerator. I remember these things. And so we, and so the model includes where we live, the places we know, the words, the objects in the world. But it's just a monstrous model and it's constantly being updated. And people are just part of that model. So are animals, so are other physical objects, so are our events we've done. So um, it's, it's no special, in my mind, special place for the memories of humans. I mean, obviously, I know you know, I know a lot about my wife, um, but, and friends, uh, and so on, but it's, it's not like a, a special place for humans are over here. Uh, but we model everything and we model other people's behaviors too. So if I said you're as a, as a copy of your mind in my mind, it's just because I know how humans, I've learned how humans behave and, um, and I've learned some things about you. Um, and that's part of my world model. Well, I just also mean, uh, the collective intelligence of the human species I wonder if there's something um, fundamental to the brain that enables that. So modeling other humans with their ideas. I'm, you're, you're, you're actually jumping into a lot of big topics. Like collective intelligence is a separate topic that a lot of people like to talk about. We could talk about that. Uh, but, um, and so that's interesting. Like, you know, we're not just individuals. We live in society and so on. Uh, but from our research point of view, and so, again, let's just talk about, we studied the neocortex. It's a sheet of neural tissue. It's about 75% of your brain. It runs on this very repetitive algorithm. It's a very repetitive circuit. And so you can apply that algorithm to lots of different problems, but it's all underneath. It's the same thing. We're just building this model. So from our point of view, we wouldn't look for these special circuits someplace buried in your brain that might be related to other, you know, understanding other humans. It's more like, you know, how do we build a model of anything? How do we understand anything in the world? And humans are just another part of the things we understand. So there's nothing, uh, there's nothing to the brain that knows the emergent phenomena of collective intelligence. Well, I certainly know about that. I've heard the terms. I've read. No, but that's right. right? Well, okay, right. As an idea. Well, I think we have language, which is is sort of built into our brains, and that's a key part of collective intelligence. So there is some, uh, you know. A, prior assumptions about the world we're going to live in when we're born. We're not just a blank slate. Um, and so, you know, did we evolve to take advantage of those situations? Yes. But again, we study only part of the brain, the neocortex. There's other parts of the brain are very much involved in societal interactions and human emotions and, um, and how we interact and even societal um, um, issues about, you know, how we or how we interact with other people when we support them, when we're greedy and things like that. I, I mean, certainly the brain is a great place where to study intelligence. I wonder if it's the fundamental um, atom of intelligence. Well, I, you know? I would say it's, it's, it's absolutely an essential component, even if you believe in collective intelligence as, um, hey, that's where it's all happening. That's what we need to study, which I don't believe that, by the way. I think it's really important, but I don't think that is the thing. Um, but even if you do believe that, then you have to understand how the brain works in, in doing that. Um, it's you know it's more like we are intelligent in, we are intelligent individuals, and together we are much more magnified our intelligence. We can do things which we couldn't do individually. But even as individuals, we're pretty damn smart, mm -hmm. and we can model things and understand the world and interact with it. So um, to me, if you're going to start someplace, you need to start with the brain. Um, and then you could say, well, how do brains interact with each other? And what is the nature of language? And how do we share models that I've learned something about the world? How do I share it with you? Which is really what, you know, sort of communal intelligence is. I know something, you know something. We've had different experiences in the world. 
I've learned something about brains. Maybe I can impart that to you. You've learned something about, you know, whatever physics, and you can impart that to me. Um, but it all comes down to even just the epistemological question of, well, what is knowledge, and how do you represent it in the brain, right? And it's not that's where it's going to reside, right? For in mm-hmm. our writings, it's obvious that uh, human collaboration, human interaction, is how we build societies, yeah. right? But some of the things you talk about and work on some of those elements of what makes up an intelligent entity is there with a single person. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it'd be, we can't deny that the brain is the core element here in, in uh, at least I, can't, I think it's obvious, the brain is the core element in all theories of intelligence. Uh, it's where knowledge is represented. It's where knowledge is created. Um, we interact, we share, we build upon each other's work, but uh, without a brain, you'd have nothing. You know, there would be no intelligence without brains. And so, um, uh, so that's where we start. I got into this field because I just was curious as to who I am. You know, how you know how do I think? What's going on in my head when I'm when I'm thinking? What does it mean to know something? You know, I can ask what it means for me to know something independent of how I learned it from you or from someone else or from society. So what does it mean for me to know that I have a model of you in my head? What does it mean to know I know what this microphone does and how it works physically, even though I can't see it right now? Um, how do I know that? Um, what does it mean? How do the neurons do that at the, the fundamental level of neurons and synapses and so on? Those are really fascinating questions, and uh, I'm happy to, to be just happy to understand those if, if I could. 